Hello, my name is Craig Bailey. And I'm Angel Bailey. We are the pastors of New Life Christian Fellowship. We want to take a moment to thank you for watching our webcast. We pray it richly blesses you today. How he loves us. I can't even comprehend it. I can't even comprehend the love of God. It's so much, so much greater than what we can wrap our minds around. Amen? Can you say that God has been good to you? Amen. If you got your Bible, turn with me to Colossians chapter 2. We appreciate you coming out to the house of the Lord today. And if you are a visitor, I hope you don't feel like one. I hope you feel at home. Yes. Amen. Amen. How many know this where we are to feel we are to feel like we're at home in the house of God? Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. Everybody say in love. In love. Mm. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith, or your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross or to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them op openly, triumphant over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using. After the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. I want to preach with, with simply a question. What is the glue? of perfection what is the glue I believe we sang about it all this morning it is the love of God it is love stay with me just for a little while amen the first thing the apostle addresses is being knitted together in love that's the first thing he addressed he said I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you the apostle knew that the enemy was at work trying to tear apart the church continually he knew he knew that the enemy was continually trying to dismantle the church from the inside that he was continually trying to change the love of God into something else 
The enemy has always specialized in trying to come in and in, in, interrupt our lives and change our minds, our mindset towards God. Because how many remembers the night that God saved you or the day that God saved you and how great of impact it had in you and, and how you felt towards God that very moment? Does anybody remember? Do you still have that feeling today towards God? Because it is the glue of perfectness. It is the love of God. I want you to know that when God came in and saved me, he changed me in such a way that I fell so deeply in love with him that I did not want anything else but him. I wanted to be in his presence and fellowship with him. I wanted to shun the very appearance of evil. I wanted to get away from evil because I was in so much love with God. You know what's wrong with the world today? You know what's wrong with many in the church world today? They are not in love with God. They are not in love with God. I said they're not in love with God. They are surely not in love with one another, and therefore you can't be in love with God if you can't be in love with one another. How many can say, Lord, help me today to understand that there's got to be a love, the love, a love for God, a love for His ways, a, a love for His will for our lives. Because when you love God, you don't complain to God about where you're at. With thanksgiving, you're thankful that God has kept you where you are. You may go, they, yeah, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death. You know one thing? I know this, that no matter where I'm at today, God's love is going to keep me from drowning. God's love is going to keep me from sinking. God's love is going to keep me from being pulled under by the enemy. It's the love of God that we have towards our God that causes us to serve him night and day, continually. It is knitted us together. It is glued us. It is bond. It's a bond that cannot be broken. I want you to know that anything that is knitted together and bond together, it loses strength when one strand gets broken from the knitting. And it starts, you can't pull it. You can't pull it apart when it's bound together. So the enemy starts unraveling. One at a time. How many say, Lord, help me be God, help me be knitted together in love, not only with you, God, but help me be knitted together with my brothers and my sisters, with the body of Christ. When people love God like they ought to love God, they're going to love one another like they ought to love one another. They're not going to be casting down other people. Listen, I know there's false religion in the world today. It's everywhere, and I know God is going to judge that, but my love for people is what's going to cause them to see there's something different about me. You're love for people is going to cause them to see something different about you to want what you have to want that love amen and this was the conflict he was warning of those that were trying to beguile the people from loving God because when you love God you, you seek his will and what his will is for your life when you love God you don't put conditions on it how many understand the love of God is unconditional? I, I love him when I don't have anything. I love him when I'm abased. I love him when I'm abounding. I love him when I'm in the valley. I love him when I'm in the desert place. I love him when I'm in, the, uh, in a steep uh, climb, amen, climbing up a mountain. No matter where I'm at, I find that if you love God like that, if you love God all the time, if you take the conditions off of your love and say, Lord, no matter what, let your will be done. This is what Jesus showed when he was in the garden. Father, nevertheless, let thy will be done. You know what he was doing? He was saying, Lord, God, you know what's best for me. You know what's best for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God understood that his love, it was not excusing sin. It was making a way for you and I to get out of sin and quit living in a life of sinning. Amen. God made a way for you and I to get out. It was because of the love of God. The love of God. Don't mistake the love of God for an excuse to sin. Many people take that for granted. God loves me. Sure he does. 
No doubt about it, more than you know, more than I know, more than anybody. But he loves you so much, he made a way for you to get out of that mess. Get you out of that pit to deliver you out. Amen. Paul was disturbed by the vain philosophers. Amen. And what they were spewing. He said, I am with you in spirit, joyful and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ Jesus. The whole concept of the enemy is based upon division because division brings separation and separation hinders the work from reaching full capability. Division keeps the work from reaching full capability of what you and I are capable of doing for God. Now we go through things that quite frankly we don't understand. We end up in places sometimes in following Christ that we don't understand why we are there. How did God allow us to get in this place? But what we understand is, wherever we go, it's a testimony of Jesus Christ and his love. Because wherever I'm at, whatever I'm going through, whether I'm facing sickness, whether I'm facing pain, sorrow, whether I'm facing uh, hurts, I know that God's love, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Neither height nor depth, nor creeping things. Nothing can separate me. My situation cannot separate me from the love of God. In fact, the love of God is going to get me through what I'm going through right now. And it's going to get me out of this. Uh, it's going to make me what God wants me to be made into. It's forming. How many can say it's forming me and shaping me? How often has, have we seen great ministries fall? Because, number one, they fall out of love with God and the work of God. Great ministries have fallen because they fall out of love with God and the work of God. It becomes about them. It becomes about what they're doing. It becomes about their name. It becomes about their church. It becomes about their religion. It becomes about them and not God. When we fall out of love with God and, and the work of God and the will of God, that's when we get in trouble. Amen. But how many knows we need to be in love with God? And then the second thing they do is they fall out of love with one another. I want you to know that the enemy is all about dividing the body of Christ, but God's love is all about bringing us together and gluing us together, amen, with charity, with the love of God. It is the glue to perfectness in our life. It's what makes us complete. It's what causes us to stand together through the storm. What I know is tonight is you can count on Jesus. You might get down on me, but don't get down on him. How many of you say, I can always count on the love of God. I can always count on Jesus Christ to get me through. Others may forsake you, but Jesus will never forsake you. Others may turn you down. Others may turn you away, but the love of God will never turn you down nor turn you away. The love of God is what makes us want to become what God ordained us to become the work of God is established in our lives by holding on to the teaching of the gospel of truth it's established in us by holding on by loving the word loving God how many knows you can't love God if you don't love his word you can't separate the two if I read the word of God and I've got a problem with it I've got a problem loving God stay with me if the word of God is speaking to my situation and I don't like what it's saying, I've got a love issue between me and God. Somebody help me out this morning. If I read the scripture and I can't read it with love towards God and towards what God is saying, I've got a love problem. When you love somebody, you, you may not agree with what they're saying, but you love them to understand there's something deeper going on here. And when you love God, you love his word and you don't shun it because you may not agree with it or because you may not have been taught in the way that it is teaching you. You love truth. You can't love God without loving his word. How many loves him today? When we get away from the gospel of truth, we give way to fallacy. I said when we get away from the gospel of truth, we give way to fallacy, which is a mistaken belief especially one based upon unsound arguments. How many would say, Lord, the word of God is truth, it's not fallacy. It is confirmed. 
How many can say it's been confirmed in your life? Do you love him today? Are you in love with him today? Being in love with God, amen, helps me to understand that, you, that I myself have got to become everything God wants me to be. And I cannot become what God wants me to be, neither can you become what God wants you to be, to be if you're caught up in trying to do and follow the things of this life. God wants us to love him above all things. And that's the reason the, the apostle was admonishing them to stand fast. So often a new thing comes through and it's like a whirlwind. It sweeps people right into the vacuum. It's all over the world. It's, it, 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 they hear something that sounds good to the ear and they swarm to it. But you know what happens to the work? It won't stand very long. If it's not grounded and rooted in God and in his word and in the love of God, it won't stand. It won't stand. How many knows we've got to build upon the rock? Yeah. If it ain't built on Jesus, it's not upon the rock. Amen. He said if any man build upon any, any foundation other than Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, if we don't build upon Jesus Christ, then we're not going to stand the test. So many things pop up and people flop to it and then it dismantles because it's not grounded and rooted and established by God. And it's not established on godly principles, on the word of God and in the love of God. I want you to know our love for God is what keeps us going. It's what keeps us wanting to live right. It's what keeps us wanting to be separated from the world. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. Amen. I said I'm in the world. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. If we're of the world, then the Father ain't in us. Amen. How, he said, how can you love the world and love me? He said, you can't do it. He said, you're going to love one and you're going to despise the other. How many can say you are in love with the Lord today? How many can say truly I love him today? And it's that love that keeps me going. That love keeps me serving him. Amen. Let me say it like this. The love of God is established in our hearts by Jesus Christ. It's established by him. Amen. And if we don't have Jesus Christ, we don't have the love of God. And, and this was the teaching that Jesus instilled into his disciples. Did he not? He said, if you love me, you will keep my word. See, a lot of people says, Lord, I love you. But they have a hard time keeping his word. They struggle. They struggle abiding in the Word. They struggle with what the Word of God is teaching and what it's saying. It's because there's a love problem. A love for God problem. He told Israel, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, thy God is one God. And his desire was for them to love them, love him with all their heart, with all their soul with all their mind, with all their strength, to love him and only him. His desire is always to have a people to love him above everything, above all things. And when people love God like that, that's what makes our life and brings it into perfection, which means completeness. That's what makes us complete in Christ. That's what keeps us serving him. Look at verse 6 again. As you therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. When we are knitted together in the love of God, we're going to walk in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to be rooted and built up in him. And he said, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein. Abounding in what? Abounding. Amen. Being rooted and built up in him. Loving God, loving his word, standing on the word of God, not wavering to the left, to the right, but staying steadfast in the word of God. Listen, if I'm wrong, I need to acknowledge that I'm wrong. I'm not going to say God's word is wrong because God's word is the truth. Too many people won't acknowledge that they're wrong and that the word is right. Come on. There's people today, I've heard people over the years talk against the Spirit of God and, and blaspheme the Holy Ghost and say that speaking in tongues is of the devil. They hadn't read the Word of God evidently. 
That's dangerous. They got a love problem with what God is saying. They got a love for God problem. Whether I am walking in it or not, it is the truth. Whether I agree with it or not, it is the truth. And when we acknowledge it to be the truth and love God with all of our heart, he's going to let his truth come in us and fill us and touch us. And whatever he wants to do in us, he will do in us when we love God like that. But when we say, God, I just simply don't believe this is the truth, then God is going to move on. You can have a form of worship. You can worship him with your lips, but your heart is going to be far from God. I want, oh, I want you to know God wants your heart today. He wants you to be in love with him, knitted together in love, not only loving him, but loving one another. How many can say, Lord, help me today to love you like that, to love you above everything, that when I read the word of God, I love it, I long for it, I desire it, I want it inside of me. I may not understand it, but God is able to teach me. Woo! I get excited when I talk about, my God, I feel the love of God here today. What a mighty God he is. Verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you through vain, or through philosophy and vain deceits after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him, everybody say in him, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Oh, Jesus is the head of this body. He is the head of this church. Amen. We are knitted together with one another through Christ Jesus. And this is where we all have common ground when we walk in Christ, knitted in love. This is where we all come together as one people. Amen. God does not lift one up above the other. Amen. Because he's not a respecter of persons. He, will, he loves you just as much as he loves me. There's not a person in this building that God don't love. There's not a person in this building that God loves more than the other. Amen? How many say it's because he loves us like that? And listen, when you love God back, huh, it's one thing for God to love you because God loves those that hate him. But when you love him back, that's when God can say, now I'm going to pick you up out of that pit, put your feet on, feet on a solid rock, feel we baptize you, circumcise you, and make you one of mine. Then he can begin to elevate your walk with God, put you in a place where he wants you. Amen? Just when we think that the preachers have got the best call or the singers have the best call or, or the, uh, the prophetic anointing has a, it all boils down to this. He said he bestowed more honor on the uncomely parts. That means <laughs> it don't matter what your part is, God loves you and it is necessary and he wants you. He wants you. It don't matter. You have a part. You are part of this. Amen. We are all part of this. And it's important to God. Amen. Look at verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding the head. How many understands that, listen, if we are not connected to Jesus, which is the head, if we're not holding to the head, which is Christ Jesus, if we're not holding to his, you can't hold to the head without holding to what he says. From which all the body, by joints and bands, having nourished but ministered and knit together, look at the last part of that verse, increaseth with the increase of God. We got to understand that we may, listen, we must stay connected. We stay connected. We stay glued and knit together by loving God with all of our hearts above all above all things loving God and then loving one another amen in that order amen by abiding in the love of Jesus Christ keeping his commandments amen I just thank God today that he is raising up a people now look at the look at the rest of the verse from which all the body by joints and bands have been nourishment ministered and knit together increase with, with the increase of God with all well listen without Without or the body, be, without it being knitted together, how many understand it's knitted together and it's joined together, but the joints 
the joints have muscles. They have bands that are bound together, which gives us the operation. They give us operation. Otherwise, we have no control over what we do. Our feet would hang down like this, and we can't function. And, and you know what? It's almost what's wrong with the church world today. Because they're not needed together and bound together in the power of God, in the love of God, they, have no, they can't function. Their joints can't, nothing can function like it should be functioning. But God is bringing us to back to the function of the Spirit is when we fall in love with God again. Be renewed. Go back to that first love he talked about in Revelations. He said, I got somewhat against you. He was talking to the church. He said, I got somewhat against you because you have left your first love. He said, repent, therefore. Go back and do your first works over again. Fall in love again. Woo! Hallelujah. Be renewed in the love of God. Amen. Amen. And what this is saying, how many knows today that if we don't work together and function together, we cannot do the work God has ordained us to do in this earth. It's God's desire that you and I go out of here today on fire for Him with a burning love in our soul for Him because when you love Him so much, you get excited. How many knows what happens when you get excited about something? You got to tell somebody. Who can I call? You get excited, you start calling folks. You start telling somebody. Oh, but they know about Jesus. No, what's wrong is that love isn't what it ought to be for God. If it was there, you'd be burning up the line. You'd be spreading the gospel instead of the gospel. Hello? I'm going to leave that in the lawn. Lord, have mercy. You just don't know. I'm going to leave that one alone. Move on. Some folks gossip, and they get mad at other folks because somebody gossiped to them and told them about somebody else gossiping about them. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. You got gossip too, and now you mad because other folks are gossiping about you. And it started with gossip. You might take notice. Hello? We've got to be knitted together to do the function of the body. Amen? How many know the church increases in power to do the work when we have been called to do it, when we've been called to do what God has called us to do? We work in that order. We let God strengthen us. We let God move in us. And then the power of God begins to increase in us. Amen? Look, which brings us to verse 20. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which, all, which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Now listen, God's true power will only be revealed or represent in someone that is holding fast and abiding in the call of God for his purpose. When we abide in the call of God, then that is, that is stating something about you and I and our love for God. We abide in it. We stay in it. We operate in it. God's power increases in our life. I was talking to a pastor uh, just the other day, Friday. When, when, a church, when a church does not do the things that they need to do for God, and not only for God, but for their individual walk with God, when a church don't fast and pray, as they should fast and pray individually. This is something uh, that is missing in the church world. When we're not doing the things that we need to do individually, seeking after God, it's going to show up in our everyday life. It's going to show up in our prayer life. It's going to show up in our duties and everything that we do. It's going to show up. But how many would say, Lord, help me today that when we fall in love with God, we're willing to do anything. Anything. This is what we like to do. Let me check my schedule. Let's see, I got a dinner Friday with this person. Uh, let's see, I've got buffet with this person next week. Can't fast next week. Let's see, maybe next month I can work that fast in. 
We, 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 we try to schedule it like that. But when, we, but when God moves upon us, this is the thing about God. When he moves upon us to do something, and he touches us with his love, and our love responds back to God, it's like, God, I'll do anything, anytime. I'm ready. Right. I, you hear me? I'll do anything, anytime. I am ready. I've never planned a fast. God has led me on two four-day fasts. And that's not boasting in the flesh. I didn't plan either one of them. I didn't plan it and say, well, let's, let me see when, uh, hmm, let's make sure I went through graduations. All kinds of things. Hey, when God calls you on a fast, it don't matter. You don't schedule God around your calendar, around your will, around your desire. When you love God, you say, I'm ready. I'll throw whatever I need to throw down right now, God. I am ready to go with it. Oh, but my Lord, you know there's a good game coming on tonight. You know, when I fast, I can't watch TV. Lord, help us. Amen. Be in love with God above all things. Colossians chapter 3. I'm, I'm trying to close. Verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections. There it is. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, when Christ, who is our life, this is it. When you give yourself away, when you love God and give yourself away, he becomes your life. He becomes your everything. He becomes your source. He becomes everything. Shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, in order to affection, evil conspicuous and covetous which is idolatry from which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience in thee which in thee which ye also walked sometimes when you lived in them but now ye also put off all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communications out of your mouth lie not one to another seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man everybody say new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Amen. Oh, I just thank God today. That got the new man, the new man is in love with God. I said the new man is in love with God. Amen. How many can say, Lord, stir that love up today in my heart today? Amen. Verse 14. Let's go back to let's go to 13. Right, let's go back to 12. I love the word. Man, that's just too good to skip. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and longsuffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. There's your answer. It is the glue that keeps you and I whole and complete in Christ the love of God amen do you love him today do you truly listen do you truly love him today father I thank you today for your love it never it never 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 fails your love has brought us so far You've brought us out of a deep, deep pit. You've delivered us from darkness and called us out into your marvelous light to walk in obedience to your word. And I pray today that this will stick to somebody's spirit, including mine, 
Let it bond us. Let it bond us. Let it be the glue that binds us together. Our love for you, God. That we would love you with all of our hearts. That we would quit dissecting the word and simply fall in love with it. Hallelujah. You see, church, when we were filthy sinners, salvation was so beautiful salvation was what I desired so much it was so attractive to me but there was a lot more to it than just the attraction if you're married you was attracted to that person, but there was more to that person than the, than the externality of it. Because you not only married that person, you married their personality. And the word that they speak and who they are. See, when we're, we know how filthy we are we desire to be cleaned we desire to be washed we desire that great salvation more than anything but then once that salvation comes in you begin to know who really Jesus is you begin to hear the word of God speaking directly to you concerning how we should live each and every day. Because that is truly who we're in love with. That is who we are truly in love with. When you, you can't love God without loving who He is. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among men you fall in love with who he is the key is to recognize what manner of person we are and where our heart is and is it truly in love with God Kayla come back if you will. it really comes back to where we stand in our hearts towards God because God loves everybody under the sound of my voice. More than you know, He loves you. He loves you. Oh, how He loves you and me. He sees us when no one else sees us. And He still loves us so dearly. When we're all alone, battling in a fight with the enemy being attacked feeling vulnerable scarred he still loves us even when you feel like the enemy's got the best of you his love never fails to get us out of that place would today be a day that you could say, Lord, I need to be re renewed in that love, God. I need to be reestablished in the love of God and the love of His Word. Would there be somebody in this building to say, God, you're talking to me. You're talking to my heart, oh God. You're speaking to my spirit today, God, and I am ready to listen.
would you listen to the Spirit today? Would you say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, hallelujah. Praise God. We hope you enjoyed today's sermon and pray that you've been uplifted by God's Word. We would love to hear from you. Please take a minute and check out our website. We would love for you to come and join us for worship anytime. May the Lord richly bless you.